Hey guys, my name is Dean. Welcome to Manflow Yoga. This workout is specifically for sciatica. So if you are experiencing sciatica or sciatic pain, this is what you'll want to do. Most typical yoga involves a lot of forward folds, and that's exactly what you want to avoid when you are having sciatic pain or sciatica. So this workout avoids all forward folds and teaches you how you can still stretch your hips uh, but while keeping your spine neutral and avoiding that sciatic pain. So enjoy this workout and for more workouts like this along with other sciatic pain routines, check out my members area at manfulyoga.com slash join. Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to Manful Yoga. You're about to watch a 29 minute workout for sciatic pain. So we're going to do a few things in this workout. Number one is relieve sciatic pain. So if you're experiencing sciatic pain, you're going to get rid of that pain and that discomfort. Number two, we're going to be working on the direct causes of sciatic pain. So that includes hip mobility, hip strength, core strength, and just improving your overall posture and working on your muscle activation so that you're more active throughout the day and you're again addressing the direct causes of the uh, sciatic pain. And then number three, you can use this workout as a resource to understand how to do the postures in a way that does not aggravate uh, your sciatic nerve. So if you have sciatic pain and you're currently going through it, it will take a few weeks or even a few months to go away. Uh, but in the meantime, if you watch this video and use the modifications I give you, you'll be able to apply them to other yoga workouts so you know what to do uh, to avoid sciatic pain. Specifically, that means not rounding your back, but we'll go into detail in this workout. So here we go. We're going to get started uh, on the mat standing up. You might need a block. All right, we're gonna start in a high lunge position. So a lot of these movements are going to be focused on hip flexor stretching. So knee over the ankle on the front foot. Make sure that your chest is pulling up and away from your hips. And we wanna focus on keeping your back neutral or slightly arched here. Definitely work on engaging the core so it helps to squeeze your legs toward one another. Pull your belly button up and in toward your lower back. Feel your abs tighten. And then squeeze your left glute and the back of your left thigh. So hamstrings and glutes engage. That's going to help pull up in the left hip flexors a little bit more. If this is too much, you can take this down to a low lunge. Just make sure that you don't lean forward and try not to shift all the weight into your left knee. Make sure you're still pushing down through your right leg. Go ahead and bring your arms up. We'll also get the arms warm as we're doing this. And we're going to hold this for about three more breaths. So staying in this pose for a long time giving your body some time to adjust, to work into it. Still keeping that core engagement and still squeezing the legs toward one another. Last breath. All right, release your arms, stand back up and switch sides. Step your right leg back. Again, avoid rounding your back. So keep your chest pulling away from your hips. Keep your core nice and long. Belly button pulls up and in toward the lower back so the abs are tight and engaged. Squeeze your legs toward one another. Again, we're squeezing the back of your right thigh, squeezing your right glute to help open up the right hip flexor. You also want to drive down through your left foot, particularly through the left heel, so you can feel your glutes working. So, and then go ahead and bring the arms up as well. And again, hanging out here for about a minute. So what we're going to be going through today is a combination of strengthening and stretching. So we're working on hip strength, we're working on core strength, and then we're working on hip mobility. And this is directly addressing the causes of uh, sciatic pain or sciatic discomfort, which is inactivity and um, improper movement. And then the direct cause is the, uh, is the uh, tightness of the piriformis muscle. But in my experience, and Based on the last few years that I've been doing this, people that I've interacted with, and also my knowledge of sciatic pain um, and how the body works, I found that general hip mobility, core strength, um, and also the poses to directly alleviate um, that sciatic discomfort are the solution to this. All right, then go ahead and stand back up. From here, I want you to grab your block or your foam roller, whatever you have, place it between your thighs, squeeze that block tightly, Push down through your heels, through your toes, 
pull your chest up away from your hips and take it into a standing side stretch. So palms together, you can interlace your fingers or you can press your palms together. Doesn't make a difference to me. Lean toward the right, press your hips toward the left. So what I want you to focus on here is engaging your core muscles. So working on your ab strength, squeezing the outer hips, squeezing your core, pulling the belly button up and in, and then staying nice and tall. Take about three slow and controlled breaths here. Make sure you're squeezing both thighs, the legs stay straight. So you're not bending one knee and keep the other leg locked out, but squeezing your quadriceps on both sides. Stay tall. Building core strength as we stretch. And then bring it back to the middle. Inhale, get tall again. Exhale, other side, hips press toward the right. Engaging your outer right hips, squeezing your core and staying tall here. Arms can squeeze back. Again, another three breaths here. You also have that block there to squeeze the block between your legs. That will help with strengthening your inner thighs. And again, hip strength, hip mobility, core strength, this is all going to contribute to alleviating uh, and also addressing the direct causes of uh, sciatic issues. One more breath. All right, and then take it back. From here into a standing back bend, squeeze your arms back, lift your chest up toward the ceiling, push down through your heels. Go ahead and look up at the sky. Squeeze your arms back as much as you can. So working into your upper back, stretching through the chest, strengthen your neck. It helps to think pushing your forehead up toward the ceiling. Squeeze your quadriceps, squeeze your thighs. One more breath here. All right, and then release. Now here's where the modification starts. So we're going to move to a half lift position here. Keep the block between your thighs. I want you to kind of sit down into a chair pose. Keep your back totally flat. If you do a chair pose incorrectly and your lower back rounds, that's going to cause that sciatic pain. So I want you to keep your back flat, squeeze your block tightly between your thighs, bring your hands to your thighs, and then come into a modified half lift. So I just want you to straighten your legs, keep your back totally flat, or straighten your legs as much as you need to to feel a stretch through your hamstrings. But I'm still squeezing that block between your thighs. And notice how upright I am here. All right, so I'm not actually forward folding, I'm keeping my back flat. Hands can push into the thighs, top of the head presses forward. But again, the back is totally flat here. So I shouldn't feel any sort of rounding or any sort of stretching through my low back. I'm focusing on actually keeping my my core and um, my spine straight. So my core is working just like it would be for a plank and I'm stretching my hamstrings. So I'm just going to hold this for a couple breaths, working into my hamstring flexibility, squeezing that block between the thighs, maybe squeezing the quadriceps. One more breath here. All right, and go ahead and Bend the knees a little bit more, get the butt down, pull the chest up, and stand up all the way. All right, take the block out. From here we're moving into a warrior one, so a different lunge, working on hip mobility a little bit differently. Back foot points out 45 degrees, front foot faces forward, bend into your front knee, knee stays over the ankle and the front foot, squeeze your legs toward one another, pull back the right shoulder so that your torso is facing straight forward, it's okay if the hips are facing someone out to the left. Again, legs are squeezing toward one another. And if you're feeling a nice stretch to the front of your left hip, great. Um, make sure that your left hip is pushing toward your right knee to help get a deeper stretch. To increase the intensity of this stretch, crawl the right foot forward a little bit more. And if you feel like your back is being a little weird or you got some pinching in the back, then bring your legs a little bit closer together. Arms come up and holding here for three breaths. Again, our goal here is hip mobility, but also working on core strength at the same time. So legs squeeze toward one another, my chest lifts away from my hips, and I'm opening up through the front of my left hip. One more breath. Now I'm moving to a modified pyramid. So pay attention. I want you to bring your hands to your hips, pull your chest forward and upright, no rounding through your back. 
and then straighten your right leg until you feel a stretch to the back of your right thigh. Again, no rounding through the back. Instead of hinging, instead of hinging forward to bring your chest toward the ground, I want you to think bringing your chest toward the wall in front of you, keeping length, ribs pulling away from the hips, and then just until you feel a nice stretch to the back of your right thigh. So your hands can stay on your hips if you want. Maybe you bring your hands in front of your sternum like this. But our main goal here is just avoiding rounding the back. So you might bend the knee a little bit more. Maybe you straighten the leg a little bit more. Goal is you should feel like you're doing a plank with your core, but you're feeling a stretch through the back of the right thigh. So we're doing a hamstring stretch with a neutral spine. Normally in a lot of the hamstring stretches we do, especially in yoga, you're going to be rounding your spine, but to avoid that sciatic pain, you're going to keep your back flat. One more breath here. All right, take it back to a warrior one, and then stand up all the way. Switch sides. Left leg forward, right leg back, point the back foot out 45 degrees, squeeze your legs toward one another. Again, left shoulder pulls back so that your shoulders are facing straight forward, but the right hip can face slightly to the right and outside, that's fine. Squeeze your legs toward one another, knee over the ankle on the front foot, drive down through your left heel, pull your ribs up away from your hips so get a lot of height, and then bring your arms up. So hanging out here in a warrior one. Again, our goal here is opening up through the groin and also through the front outer hip, your right hip flexor. Neck should be neutral. Try to avoid letting your head come forward. Pull your chin back toward your throat. So one other cause of sciatic pain is just poor posture while you're sitting and also while you're standing. So if you can work on being more active while you are uh, being inactive, so to speak. So if you can make sure that you're using your hip muscles more, you're using your core, core muscles more on a daily basis, just in uh, activities like sitting or standing, then that also will help with um, the uh, direct causes of, of uh, sciatic discomfort. All right, and then into that modified pyramid. So hands come to the hips, pull your chest forward. Again, we wanna think bringing the chest to the wall in front of you, and then straightening the left leg until you feel a stretch to the back of the left thigh, avoiding sciatic pain, again, so avoiding rounding through your back, so keeping your chest pulling up. So the, your heart is going to stay above your hips here, so I don't want you folding down at all. I want you to pull your chest forward and just straighten your leg until you feel that stretch. If you can, if you feel comfortable here, maybe you can hinge a little bit more, but if you feel that tinge or that pain that says no back off, then come back up again. If you can, try to squeeze your legs toward one another. Belly button pulls up and in so your core stays tight. I'm gonna take one more breath here. All right, bend back into that knee, back to warrior one, and then step up. All right, go ahead and grab your block. We're gonna move into a chair pose. So make sure that you're doing chair pose correctly. I'll walk you through it. Squeeze the block between your legs. Allow your knees to bend slightly forward. Keep your chest upright. Keep your back flat. Abs just like you'd have them for a plank. Bring your butt back and down. Keep your chest up. Squeeze that block between your thighs. Notice that my back is totally flat here. One big problem I see a lot in chair pose is people tend to round the back. Right? And that's going to cause that pain. So make sure your butt is poking out behind you. Chest is pulling forward and slightly up. Straight line from your waist through your chest. Arms can come out in front of you. If your back stays neutral and doesn't arch, then you can also bring your arms overhead. But if you notice that when you bring your arms overhead, your back starts to arch, then you can bend your arms. And now we're strengthening the thighs, strengthening your glutes, strengthening your core. This is a really great pose to help with. It helps us build warm up. It helps to strengthen uh, all those muscles I just mentioned. Helps to counter a seated position. In a lot of ways, it's addressing the direct causes of that sciatic pain. Sit down a little bit lower. Keep your chest up. Keep the back flat. One more breath. and then stand back up. 
All right, nice. We're gonna take it into a wide-legged forward fold here, but again, modifying this slightly to avoid pain. So I want you to take your feet wide, push into the outer edges of your feet, make sure your toes are turned slightly in, and then bend your knees. This is going to help you to keep your back flat. And then from here, bring your butt back and down a little bit. Keep your chest pulling forward away from your hips. So you've got a nice long line from your waist up through your throat. Abs are tight, just like you'd have them for a plank. And I'm moving into this wide-legged forward fold with a flat back. So if you look at me from the side, my back is flat. I'm not rounding my lower back at all. But the cool thing about doing it like this is I can still get that stretch that I want through my inner thighs and my hamstrings, but I'm doing so without rounding my spine. So this is something that you can do in any yoga workout. This is how you're going to modify it to make sure that you aren't rounding your back um, and aggravating that sciatic pain. And as you progress through the workout, you might get to the point where your hips and your muscles have opened up so that that piriformis is no longer aggravating um, the sciatic nerve. And you might be able to do forward folds after a bit of warm up, but um, initially you wanna avoid forward folds. So I'm focusing on the stretch of the backs of my thighs and my inner thighs. Just kind of bending my knees, straightening my leg a little bit, pulling the chest forward, keeping the chest pulling forward, belly button pulled up and in. All right, and go ahead and stand up. And then I want you to find a wall or something to help you balance. We're going to do a standing figure four balance. So right hand on the wall, stand on your right leg, cross your left ankle over your right thigh in a figure four. And very important, keep your chest upright and kind of sit down to a chair pose on one leg, just like we did for that chair pose before. And again, you want to keep your back flat. So we're avoiding rounding the back, right? One big problem that I see is people round the back in this position. You want to keep your chest upright, core tight, spine straight. And then you can kind of sit down deeper into this while keeping the back flat, pushing down through your right foot. And now we're going to feel some stretching through the outer left hip. Again, keep your chest upright. If you fold forward, that is going to aggravate things. Keep that chest upright and keep your abs tight and engaged. If you don't need the support, you can move your hands off the support. We're just using that help for balance so we can focus on the stretch and not have to worry about balance. All right, and go ahead and stand up and switching sides. So again, left hand on the wall now, standing on the left leg, Cross your right leg over your left ankle, sorry, right ankle over the left thigh. Keep your chest upright, keep the back flat. Bring your butt back and down. So you're getting your butt kind of out and down behind you. So I'm not just letting my butt come straight down toward my heel, but kind of pushing it back, just like I would for a chair pose. So a chair pose is a hinge movement. Um, it's not, I'm bringing my butt back um, and not just sitting straight down. And hinging, makes the movement happen from my hips, not through my spine. So the back stays straight as I'm doing this. So what we're doing here is we're actually stretching those muscles um, that irritate the sciatic nerve. So we're stretching your piriformis right now, or working on the external hip rotators, your glutes. And so this is a really good pose for uh, directly alleviating that discomfort, but um, it does take some warm up uh, unless you're pretty advanced. So that's why we do all this other stuff beforehand uh, before we do this pose, that's why we didn't do it right at the beginning. Take another breath here, maybe sit down a little bit lower, keeping the chest upright. All right, and then stand up. All right, now we're gonna move down to the ground. So we're gonna move down into a plank position by now. And by the way, safe way to get into the plank without rounding is kind of stepping back into a lunge. And then from there, moving into your plank. But by now, your core should be pretty warm, uh, hips should be pretty open, so you won't have as much sciatic discomfort at this point. Take it into a plank, belly button up, top of the head pressing forward, squeezing your feet toward your hands. Make sure that your back isn't up too high, that's going to aggravate, it's probably going to aggravate something. So you want to try and keep a straight line from your heels through your shoulders. Top of the head presses away from you, and you're going to look slightly forward to help strengthen your neck. So think chin pulling toward your throat. 
Again, hands squeeze toward the feet, squeeze, feet squeeze back toward the hands. And that's going to add a little more challenging uh, core engagement. And take two more breaths here. All right, go ahead and lower down flat onto your chest. Flip your feet, press the tops of your feet into the ground. Squeeze your legs toward one another. Belly button pulls up and in toward your lower back and lift into a cobra. So top of the head presses forward away from your hips. Elbows squeeze back toward your hips and in tight toward your sides. Make sure you're lifting straight up, not leaning toward one side or the other. So both erector spinae, those are the muscles on either side of your spine, should be equally engaged, not one or the other. Keep pushing the feet down. Keep your core tight. Legs should be locked out so your quadriceps are very engaged. Inner thighs are engaged because you're squeezing your legs toward one another. And this pose in a lot of ways is, again, addressing those direct causes of sciatic pain. Five more seconds, that's it. Two, one, and then release. From here, take it into a tabletop. Do not go into a child's pose. Your back will not like it. So take it into a table pose, or sorry, tabletop, move to a bird dog. So I'm gonna have you bring your left arm straight out. Without moving your hips, bring your right leg straight back. And we're gonna hold here. Just another core strengthening exercise. Press the right heel back, squeeze your right leg up. Pull your belly button up and in toward your lower back. Left arm presses forward. Squeeze your right arm toward your left knee, left knee back toward your right hand. Next stays neutral. Take a couple breaths here. One more breath. And then release. Keep strict tabletop form. Bring your right arm straight out without moving your hips. Slowly bring your left leg back. Press your heel back. Reach your toes toward you. Again, belly button pulls up. Core stays tight, just like you'd have it for a plank. Squeeze your left hand and your right knee toward one another. And again, hold here for a couple breaths. So here we're working on core strength. Again, sciatic pain is partly caused by a lack of core strength. It is one of those indirect causes of it. So we wanna work on that. One more breath. All right, and then release. And from here, we're going to do a couch stretch. So if you have a wall or a couch, I'm gonna have you find that couch or that wall, put your leg up against the wall so that your knee is right in front of the wall and your shin is facing the wall. And then grab your block. This is going to help with this. Step your left leg up. So let's go with the right leg back first. Step your right leg up. Pull your chest forward, use the block at first. So this is as far as you'll go if this is really intense for you. This is level one. To make this more intense, you're going to start coming upright. All right, so I'm lifting my chest up and bringing my hips back toward my ankle that I'm stretching. I can also kind of sink into this lunge a little bit more. So this is called a couch stretch. This is really good for opening up your hip flexors. Um, it's one of those stretches that is, again, really going to help with uh, addressing some of the direct causes of sciatic pain, or indirect causes of sciatic pain. Remember, the whole body is interrelated, even if um, the muscle that we're stretching right now doesn't touch or come close to the sciatic nerve, um, this affects those muscles. So the whole body is interrelated, we're working on the body as a whole, not as individual parts. Try to keep your chest pulling up and away from the hips, just like a lot of the poses that we've done. You can also work on squeezing the back of the right thigh here if that's doable. Again, you also have the option to be kind of more in a, um, a relaxed position here, kind of pulling your chest forward and leaning slightly forward. Just make sure that you're keeping your back straight. Deep breaths, one more breath. All right, and then go ahead and come out of that. And then we're going to switch sides. So again, left knee goes next to the wall. 
and you're going to start with the shin up the wall and if you if this is uncomfortable for your ankle you can also bring your knee a little bit further away from the wall and then put your toes on the wall instead and that's going to be a little less intense step your right leg forward pull your chest forward and up again we want to get that back into a nice neutral position use the block to help you here so left hand on the block right foot forward pull your chest forward and up feel this nice stretch through the front of the left hip breathe in and out of the nose helps to drive down through your right foot. If you want to get a more intense stretch through the left hip, you can also squeeze the back of your thigh and your left leg and your left hip. So you're squeezing your glute and you're squeezing your hamstring to help open up the hip flexor. When one side of the body flexes, the other side extends. So this is a way to improve your flexibility it's through active engagement of the antagonist muscle group. As you exhale, release into the stretch a little bit more. It might be really intense at first, but as it goes on, it will get less intense. Again, if you want to make this more intense, you can work on coming more upright through your chest. You can also get that foot flat against the wall and the shin closer to the wall, the knee closer to the wall. Couple more breaths. All right, and then slowly release. And mirror moving into pigeon. This is probably the most helpful stretch that you can do for um, sciatic pain. So pigeon, you're gonna start off in a figure four position. Bring your right knee up behind your right wrist. Bring the right foot across the body. Keep your chest pulling forward and up. Inner thigh faces up, outer thigh faces down. Crawl your left leg back. So you're kind of, um, what's this word here? Kind of caterpillaring your leg your left foot to the back here. And again, I wanna pull my chest forward and up. So I see a lot of people do pigeon incorrectly. They kind of just let their chest collapse. That's not going to feel good for you. So make sure that you're keeping your chest pulling forward and you're staying upright here. And instead of thinking chest to shin, I want you to think chest to the wall in front of you. So keeping your back nice and long, maybe sinking a little bit deeper into this stretch, but avoiding any sort of uh, rounding through the back. So the core stays tight. Again, we want to keep the core engaged. We're working on core engagement to prevent that rounding of the spine. And in so doing, uh, doing pigeon in a way that doesn't aggravate your lower back. As you exhale, sinking deeper into this, but maintaining good form, just improving or increasing the depth. Last breath here. All right, keep in mind you're welcome to come back to this again or press pause and keep holding it. But we're going to switch sides. So go ahead and come back to the tabletop position. Keep that spine in a neutral position and then switch sides. Left knee toward your left wrist, left foot across the body, left inner thigh facing out. Again, the, this stretch works with the external rotation of your hip. So if you notice that your shin is kind of down and your knee is just up here, like this with the outer thigh still facing up with the, uh, top of the thigh still facing up, it's not gonna do much for you. So make sure that you are turning that hip out so the inner thigh is facing up, outer thigh is facing down, top of the thigh is facing out. And then if you want, caterpillar that right leg toward the back. Make sure there's no tension in the knee here. The stretch should be in the hip. Your knee does not stretch. It is a joint. When you stretch your knee, it just hurts it. So avoid that. Pull your chest up again, get nice and long, get kind of tall here. And slow down your breathing. Try to relax your shoulders, relax your face, especially if this stretch is intense for you. Try to relax your shoulders, relax the other parts of your body, and that will help send a message to your hips that, hey, it's okay, you guys can relax too. allowing that left hip to sink toward the floor, but keeping your core engaged and again, staying long through your chest. Taking one more deep breath here. Keeping in mind that you're welcome to hold this after we finish. 
All right, you can go ahead and come up, and that is it. All right, guys, so that was uh, our workout, quick sciatic, um, quick workout for uh, sciatic pain, both addressing the direct causes of it and also alleviating sciatic pain. So I hope you enjoyed that workout. If you have comments, leave them below. If you're watching this from the members area, thanks for being part of the members area. Um, let other members know what you thought of the workout. If you're watching this somewhere else, like it, comment, share, all that good stuff. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on another video soon. Take care.